my tutorial for a mica and glitter fall themed glitter tumbler. I have already prepped my tumbler with an 80 grit sanding block and orange slice color shot spray paint. Now I'm ready to start my mica base. I'll be using Woods Goodies micas and adding them to my leftover epoxy after I apply a thin coat. This will help my micas blend together easier when I add them later. I'm applying micas with my finger, but you can also use a popsicle stick or a stir stick. I just feel more comfortable and feel like I have more control adding them using my finger, but do whatever is easiest for you. Now, I know it's not even August yet, y'all, but this is my channel and this channel is going full steam ahead on fall designs. Sorry, not sorry. I am so done with summer and heat and bugs and just bleh. Bring on the cool, crisp air, sweatshirts, and bugs dying by the millions, please and thank you. When I'm all done applying my micas the way I like them, I'm going to use my kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles and kind of get those micas blending a little bit. Don't use a full powered propane torch or you'll get your micas moving a little bit too much. Let cure, then we'll be ready to add our stencils. I'm going to be doing leaves and making them about two and a half to four inches tall, but you can size them however you like. You can also do pumpkins instead of leaves, which would be super cute. When I'm finished adding my stencils, I'll be using a low temp glue gun to mark them so I can find them under the glitter that I'll be adding in a bit. Then I'll be spray painting my tumbler with blue, with blue spray paint. <laughs> So I'll have a nice base for my glitter application. Now, some people have asked me why I use a low temp glue gun and not just a regular glue gun. You can kind of, I'm, wait, hold on. I'm trying to think. You can see what type of glue gun you have. It should say on the side if it's a low temp or a high temp glue gun, but the high temp glue guns, which I have used in the past, that kind of makes it hard for me to pull up my stencil. It's almost like the hot temperature melts the stencil into the epoxy and it's just a pain in the butt to pull up. So I just use a low temp glue gun. To apply my glitter, I'll be using the epoxy method. You can also use Mod Podge, that evil Mod Podge, evil devil's glue, but whatever, whatever, whatever you have on hand that is easiest for you or how you like to do it. Some people use, back in the day, you used, they used to use hairspray. Can y'all believe it? it was hairspray? And I was like, okay, do you boo, do you, but do whatever you like or whatever is easiest for you. And for my glittering, I'll be doing a darker blue around the top and the bottom. Then I'll be sprinkling it around the cup in spots and doing the same with the lighter blue. This is just gonna give my glitter more dimension instead of just using one flat color. You absolutely don't have to do this, but if you wanna give your tumbler some extra oomph, this is how you can do it. 
Because I used Fast Set also to apply my glitter, I'll be immediately pulling my tape, I'm sorry, not my tape, my stencils, since the Fast Set has pretty much started curing as soon as I put it on the tumbler. So don't take too long glittering your tumbler if you use Fast Set too. Let your glitter layer cure, then we'll be ready to seal with a coat of epoxy and of course, more glitter. Just do it, just do it. I've added Starry Night into my leftover epoxy and I'll be adding it over the blue spaces on the tumbler. If the glitter drifts onto the orange spots, no worries, it will still look fabulous. I sealed with another coat of epoxy after this one just to make sure my glitter was covered enough so I could sand the rim and any rough spots I find without sanding my glitter. Then I was ready to add my leaf outlines. I decided to do the same design we did on our fall snow globe design that we did a couple weeks ago and place them kind of overlapping the leaf peekaboos and not outlining them. But if you want to outline them, you can, okay? You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, fam. Please never feel like you have to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing that out there, okay? Don't, don't come for me, don't come for me. I neglected to show that I sealed this layer with epoxy, but I did seal my vinyl leaf outline so I could add my decal and signature on a nice smooth surface. If you'd like to use the same SVGs I used on this tumbler, you can find them in my Etsy shop. I'll also link the files in the description box down below. This decal has some really thin parts to it, so I recommend doing reverse weeding when you put this on your tumbler or if you decide to use this for your tumbler. Reverse weeding is pretty much when you just take your transfer tape, put it over the whole piece of vinyl that you've cut, and then weed from the transfer tape. Now my tumbler is looking absolutely beautiful, but the bottom of this bad boy, not. 
so much. So I decided to do a glittered bottom. You don't have a lot of room to do this on these stubbies from the Craft Haven. So you only need a little bit of your mixture. I'm gonna be using Counterculture DIY's UV resin and the cast off glitter from earlier when we glittered the tumbler. I sealed my tumbler till it was nice and smooth, and then I was all done. Ball tumblers are in full effect, and I hope y'all are ready. <laughs> That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. A huge thank you to all of my mentorship and channel members. Your support is literally everything. Have fun making your mica and glitter fall-themed tumblers, and I'll see you again next time.